Hi, welcome. This is Dr. John Martini. This is one of the most amazing and inspiring shows that you can listen into. If you want to be on the edge of your seats, if you want to open up your heart, if you want to expand your mind, and you want to meet incredible people, stay tuned because you're just about to experience a transformative radio show that will change your life. And you're listening to the Dr. Pat Show. It's coming up right next. Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. Talk radio to thrive by. Powerful, inspiring, and coming to you live, bringing you stories of people like you and me, busting through and living life full out. Get ready to dare to wonder what your life would be like if you knew you could not fail. Hey, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. This is Talk Radio to Thrive By. We've got another great lineup for you today. But I have, I want to start off because um, I wanted to make a few announcements and I've asked Jessica to join me here as well as Benny and Jacob. Uh, For those of you that have heard the rumors that we will be moving from this time slot, that is correct. Um, But not on TTR. So I want to just make the announcement because this is our 20th year anniversary with KKNW. And without my relationship with KKNW, I wouldn't be here talking with you. But in the 20 years I've been here, I have been waiting for a drive time. And of course, conscious uh, talk had that slot. But recently, we've been made aware that now available to us as we expand and we grow as a network, as we launch new channels, we will be moving to the 7 a.m. on Monday and 7 a.m. on Wednesday time spot on KKNW. It doesn't change a single thing for Transformation Talk Radio or how you can listen to us at different times. But it's an important first move for a lot of us for a lot of reasons. And I have Jessica, right? Jessica, this is, um, what do you want to call it when people start to make these changes? Uh, They're like phases. It's it's almost like a phase one, but it's like something that I've been working towards for 20 years, right? And here it is. Absolutely. And I think, uh, I don't know if you'll say this about yourself, so I'll say it, is there's a powerhouse behind Dr. Pat and something you've wanted to do with your platform for a long time and making a shift like this also is an energetic shift, but also an awesome time shift for you to be able to do that and see a lot of really cool new ways to do your show. Yeah. And I I wanted you to come on here because I want to be able to now talk about what we're doing and the changes we're making, because we have talked a little bit about it and what we're doing with the network, but I think they've heard it from me. I, I wanted you to come on to tell folks what you have been doing, you know, as sort of the genius behind this and Linda as well, and others on the team to really craft, you know, what we're doing with the transformation network, because that too will be changing sort of, what did you call it? Energy? Yeah, it's a, it's a new energy for all of it. And it's expansive. And, you know, I think people on here have probably heard you talk about the new channels, the new technology for years. Uh, And we've been, you know, my, I, this is my new favorite t- term for this kind of stuff, micro dosing, these kind of things with testing the waters and seeing what's out there. And we've been very carefully planning it to do it, not only technically right, but energetically right. It yeah. has to be the right time and the world's ready for it now. And so we go from podcasting to live streaming TV with a whole new interface, ways to interact and connect with our hosts um, very niche channels. So, and solu- all solution-based depending on if you're interested in conscious business or health and wellness or LGBTQ or equity and diversity or, um, r- recovery and addiction or women's health or spirituality. And so we're going to direct people to very specific content in a way that allows them to do it live TV and podcasting. And, you know, for me, Jessica, thank you for so beautifully saying that it takes a village and it took a village and it will take a village. And as a result of that, uh, I I will have to say one thing I'm very happy about, unless Benny, something has changed. I still get to hang out with Benny. It's just like our eyelids are probably not as wide open, but. (laughs) Yeah, a lot of surgeries. 
<laughs> I was still like, you know, <laughs> going to stay in there. Um, and uh, for those of you that are asking, will I do Monday through Friday at 7 a.m.? The goal is yes. We're not going to come out of the gate like that. Monday and Wednesday for sure on KKNW. And then we'll add Tuesday on TTR. So my platform will still say consistent, but it will be no longer be at the 10 to noon spot Monday through Friday. And it was one of the hardest decisions, Benny, I have ever made regarding this. And I've made some doozies, but it is in the spirit of not just growing and expanding to grow and expand. Jessica, let's talk to this for a little bit, if we could, because we got to be where we are because our hosts and co-hosts told us, didn't they? Absolutely. I had a conversation uh, with somebody last week about this and she's like, what was the genius business plan behind growing this network? And I just laughed and I said, you know, Dr. Pat's a woman with a genius business organizational development background, but that's actually only part of what built this. What built this was listening to what people need and what people want and acting intentionally around it to make sure that they have the support system in place to not only get their message out to the world, but really do it in a way that honors who they are and how they want to do it. Yeah. Um, I worked, I was working with somebody the other day, a business person who said to me, we don't get it. I mean, we understand why you're doing it, uh, but what does it do for you? And I said, well, wait a minute. It's never been our intention to only do things for us. And they always pause and they look at you oddly, like who else could you do it for? And I said, what I've noticed in a 20 year industry and especially being one of the first podcasters in digital format. I mean, I was doing digital format in 2003. So what is digital format? It's called internet, right? So it wasn't called digital, it was just called internet, like internet radio, right? But here's what I love about this one. Now that we're reflecting back, getting ready to raise funds through crowdfunding for AI for the soul. But here's what I said to them. I said, you know, it's very easy to build what we build if we only have us in mind. I said, but that was never our intent. We have built technology that we could, we could call up the people that own KKNW and any talk radio network on the planet and say to them, how would you like technology that will cut your effort, increase your distribution, and make it user-friendly for your host? And by the way, if you're all in for that, then what you might be able to do is have it up and running in 48 hours. And when you say that to people, they say, what would be up and running? What would be up and running, Jessica? An entire interface, an entire dashboard, an entire website, back-end, front-end. Um, all of it that goes into what you see as a user when you go to any online streaming network. Yeah. And so it had to be both for us. It had to be, how do we spread positive talk through individual channels, but how can we help some of the networks? So many of we've seen them go away because they didn't have the technology. I've watched this in 20 years. I've watched positive talk, spirituality, you name it, whatever you want to call it, human potential, not just go away. But I think what we've also watched them do, not be able to begin. How many people, Jessica, have we talked with that have come to us and said, we want our own channel? And they just have not been able to make it happen, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you and I in the past year, we have put, we have put feelers out there for what people want. We know the channels people want. We know the other people would want to start their channels. What excites you, Jessica, from where you sit? And by the way, Jessica is uh, one of our senior executive producers. As I said before, she and I have spent many nights debating, arguing, and then implementing what this technology should look like. And we're actually going to do one more change. But she's also the head of our sales and marketing organization. And she is the leading expert on our team for how to run things, how to change things. And she will be developing a new staff of people because we are going to be hiring producers. But what excites you most as you sit here today, even after the little call we had this morning, what are you seeing shifting and changing? And what are you most excited about? 
the ease. I think the ease in which all of this comes together and how easy it will be as a user to get the app, to bookmark something, to follow your host, and how easy it'll make our it for our host to access and market their own stuff. I think yeah. of all the things as entrepreneurs, everybody's busy and overwhelmed. And even as users, we're flooded with stuff all the time and it has to be easy. And yeah. for me, this feels easy. It does. And I'm, I'm already getting text messages. So I will clarify for those of you that are just like already just lighten this thing up here. Um, first of all, I can't thank this audience enough. You have been extremely loyal. You're the best audience on the planet ever. And effective Monday of next week, we will be moving from the 10 to noon spot on KKNW to 7 a.m. on Monday and 7 a.m. on Wednesday. And we will continue to be adding more shows as time comes available in that drive time spot. It is something we're really excited about because this is our flagship. We hear grew this out of the Pacific Northwest. And we want to continue to grow it and support all of the cool things here, all of the businesses, all of the people. And that's why we're making the shift. And thank you to Eric Crema, Benny, all of the people at KKNW for working with us to make this happen and to bring it to reality in conjunction with everything we're doing. See, a lot of times, Jessica, you can, you can put something like this together and it never works out where everybody gets the win. This is a big win-win, isn't it? It's an infinite win, as they say. You heard it first right here. <laughs> Jessica, Jessica Henderson, uh, senior executive producer, and so much more. Uh, when we come back, we have a very special guest that's going to work with us because here's what I want you to know. Our programming has helped millions of people worldwide. I don't even know what our, our website hit thing is anymore. I just know we have to grow because every time we get a real popular weekend, we go down that is going to stop in about a month. We're gonna come back and ask y'all for help. Eric is gonna work with me so we can get that message out. But the thing you all should know is this change doesn't diminish our commitment to providing you with the best positive media that we can. If in fact, if anything, it raises the bar for all of us. Let's take a short break and we come back. We're gonna get down to some things we need to do and learn from the mystical, from the magical, when you enact a vision. Thank you, Sari. We'll be right back. Hey, everybody. Wow, wow, wow. Thank you. Thank you. And welcome back. It's so great to have all of you tune us in and turn us on. Uh, for, mo for many of you, um, you may have heard the announcement. We're going to make sure you play it uh, again. But I will tell you that I am so influenced by people like my guest today. And actually, it was through reading her book over the weekend and really leaning into what she was saying where I made the decision this morning to make that announcement. See, because I was really unsure. I was really uncertain. And then I get her message, her book, her passion, her wisdom in my hand. And I'm going to tell you something. When you get somebody like Sarah Bertrand in your space, energetically and otherwise, when you look at feminine myth, magic, and mysteries. And you start to not just read it, but you're looking, you're on her website and you are looking into those eyes. <laughs> you're just looking at that. And you're like, okay. What you realize is there is a pathway, there is a purpose, and there are infinite possibilities. But what do we need to know from this award-winning award -winning author on feminine wisdom, storyteller, spirit keeper? What, what is it that we are going to learn and know today by her latest genius work, Spirit Weaver? Wisdom teachings from the feminine path of magic. Saren, thank you so much for today. It's so great to have you here. It's, yeah. it's amazing to be here. I'm excited to weave some magic with you. Well, okay. So hello, you already did. I mean, <laughs> I prepped for the shows. So I know they send me all these questions, but I read the book. 
Yeah. And I can't remember where I'm hoping I find it as we go through, but there was something I read that had to remind me mm. of something that I can't even explain. Mm. Can you talk to that? Because we feel things, we know mm. things. And in order for you to show up and be you in this world, you have had to get past a whole lot of challenges and a whole lot of obstacles, right? Mm. Yes, absolutely. What was that ride like for you? <laughs> I'm riding a dragon. <laughs> And then I became the dragon. <laughs> uh, but let me ask you this question, and your book really does a beautiful job of explaining mm. this to people. Mm. Whether, whether you're reading from the domestic nature of creating your nest mm. or the one that I think, the chapter that I think I read, and maybe you can talk to it as we go on today, is this idea of rooted power yeah. and then endarkenment. Mm. I was so in awe by reading this as I hesitated and I was going to make the announcement. Mm. Tell me about what this beautiful pathway and what, and what this idea of spirit weaving does. Because one of my totems is a spider. And it was given to me when Sidonia Cahill, mm -hmm. my mentor, she, right before she passed away, suddenly, she said, Pat, you will not get this for a while, but you are going to learn that you are the weaver and the weaver and the web are one. Mm -hmm. Now, this was, I was still in school, didn't start the network, but this is also what you're saying too, aren't you? Yes, exactly. So the, the title of the book is Spirit Weaver, and it's about feminine magic. And so what we often find is that, you know, we hear a lot about magic in the world. And even if we're not a believer in magic, we're watching it on our movies and our TV shows. So um, we are infused by the sense that there is a magic available in the world. But often that magic has a masculine kind of dimension to it. And not that there's anything wrong with that. That's amazing and brilliant too. But what it often misses is the special magic of the feminine, which is deeply connected actually to embodiment and to earth and to the cycles and to this sense of inner knowing. And it's like an instantaneous knowing. And it doesn't always make logical sense. And this is where the weaving web comes in. And, and I love the parallels between this, you know, gray metaphor, spiritual metaphor, and the, the internet, the interweb, that there are these webs or these threads of um, magic and information and fate that behind the scenes or kind of on a level of reality that we don't always have access to are spinning into being entire worlds and possibilities. And what we have to learn to do is tune in to that possibility that's already there. It's kind of already being woven into being. And, um, you know, and that's what makes it graceful or easeful because part of the path of magic is we're not doing everything ourselves in this like huge struggle. That's like a very um, kind of mundane world way of thinking yeah. that we have to work hard and, you know, we have to take all these logical steps. And of course, hard work and, and having a plan and a vision all really important so we're in no way diminishing those masculine qualities but it's this feminine intuition and this feminine magic that allows us to take those quantum leaps yeah. and really at this time that's what we're looking for is to tap in to that wisdom that's going to um make kind of tune us into the miracle frequency yeah. And, you know, this is what we really need to look at exactly in your words, because, you know, what would, let me throw this out. 
what is the one thing that derails this in a nanosecond, right? Now, I'm going to tell you what it is for me. I'm okay. sure it's not the only thing. Okay. I'm sure you're going to give us a list. Yeah. But because of the way you wrote this book and because of the things you put in the book, this thing I'm about to say to you, I, I jacked that up and I flipped that around this morning and I just kicked it out of my house. It's called doubt. Yes. <laughs> right? Yeah. People say, doubt, isn't it fear? I said, I don't know what it is for you. I don't know that, but I'm telling you it's doubt. The minute that I have an idea of vision, the minute I read a book like this and I'm all into it, I already in the knowing, I know I'm mm -hmm. going to make the announcement. I know I'm going to meet about it. It's like coming home. Yeah. Doubt is the party crasher. Yes. <laughs> and, and, you know, one of the things that in feminine magic we do is we all have this doubt. And, and I think no matter how much spiritual work we've done, it's not something that goes away. So this is, again, something in feminine magic is the sense of alchemy. It's not about being this perfected being who never has a negative thought. It's how you work with it. So, and actually, usually the, the, the bigger our vision gets, the bigger our work gets, the bigger the doubts get. It's yeah. it's kind of one of those spiritual uh, truths that the more energy we're holding, the more of uh, that other energy and how we weave and work with that. And so for me, um, one of the things with doubt is to welcome it to the table. Let it sit down at the table, let it have its business meeting, let it make its points. <laughs> you know, Dow always wants to raise some, like, it's like your business manager who's, you know, but don't embody that doubt. Don't let that doubt become you as if it's your truth. Let yeah. it have a, um, a place at the table, listen to it. And then, you know, and sometimes doubt does bring up some questions that can actually help us make things more streamlined and more efficient and, uh, and, 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 you know, kind of alert us to things that need fine tuning. But ultimately, we ask these, you know, negative emotions, doubt, fear, uncertainty, lack, you know, we gather them, we make a pot of tea, we let them, we give them space to have a contribution and we say thank you. But then we come back in to our body and our body knowing and trusting that. And so I think that is in a way the magical art, allowing those voices to have a space. Cause often if we really just push them away, they kind of come back, but then having the techniques or the trust to say, I've heard you and yet still I believe and I trust and I am making this quantum leap and and i always say it's like i imagine it it's like our mother mind and then our thinking mind it's like it's kind of like a, we make it a cup of tea and we give it a few biscuits and we pat it on the head and reassure it <laughs> yeah i love this because i was reading this in, in your book and i love the, the metaphor you just used because here's my bottom line after reading your book where I came to about that doubt. And I'm going to apologize in advance because it's not very sexy, but this is what hit me. It's like, okay, you're invited to the table, but you cannot have seconds. Doubt <laughs> cannot have seconds. You cannot come back no, and get exactly. yourself another big plate of meat. No. Yeah. No, exactly. And that's it. It's, it's to be very, it's t kind of to have boundaries with these voices. And, you know, and, and sometimes they're in our head and sometimes they're in our family systems or cultural systems. You know, we can't live in a, you know, a vacuum. So we can engage with these things, but we have this boundary. It, and, and magic is all about boundaries. So this is one of the things I love about embodiment. Yeah. Uh, feminine magic is all about creating the container, having the boundary. So, you know, for people who know basic magic, drawing a circle, the magic circle is the first act of magic. You're creating a 
container and a boundary and then all the magic happens in there and even though the the voices might be tapping on the window outside saying this will never work you know it's like you've created your magical container and that is it's like an energetic womb space that's going to grow something incredible in your life I love it. And I love the way you've gone through this. First of all, for those of you just tuning in, you know, I, I want to, I want you to, first of all, I want you to meet Saren, Saren Bertrand. And you can go to the website and it's S-E-R-E-N-B-E-R-T-R-A-N-D.com. When you go there, look, you're going to find the books, you're going to find the essays, but you're going to find much more. This is what I love. If you go to the website, click on the feminine magic button. There's a button right on our homepage. And what you're going to find, and I dare you not to be able to look into her eyes for anything less than like 10 seconds, <laughs> but click on the button. What you're going to find is what we're talking about. And, and there's so much more. And I got to congratulate you for the awards you're winning, but I'm not surprised. I wish I could say we were surprised. So here's my, here's the next thing I want to chat with you about. Why am I not surprised? So Benny has heard me mention this a million times. The precursor to the conversations and the writing of the book started about two decades ago when our pop culture started to change. Mm. How did it change? Game of Thrones would not be the hit it was if it came out today. Mm. Game of Thrones in anything related to this in the pop culture, and I use pop culture, but it's, let's say, mainstream. Mm. There were just some changes that happened that the divine feminine had a chance to really wake up and ignite. Mm. Yeah. Now, why do I use that as a reference? Because it says that your book, your message, isn't for a small group of people like it was 20 years ago or even 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. It is for the message that people can't wait to get their hands on. What do you think has changed? What do you think Spirit Weaver would love to tell us? <laughs> well, what I think from a metaphysical perspective is that in 2012, we actually moved into a feminine energy yeah. dimension, the yeah. whole world, and we're just catching up now. And, and so a lot of these kind of crazy shifts that we're seeing in the world and the chaos, and of course, we know that one of the ways that the feminine spins and weaves her magic is through chaos. Chaos creates possibility. And the linear mind, love certainty but if you're on a, a timeline and that it's certain and progressing but you want change you have to enter a time of chaos for a new possibility to emerge so from my perspective as you know many um spiritual traditions have foretold 2012 there was a huge energy shift but for me that energy shift was that uh a feminine energetic and it's taken over the world and anything that can't really flow with that is um is kind of moving into more chaos in order to find a deeper possibility so i think that there's a purpose in the chaos and and then this kind of feminine magic this feminine energy is rising and it's finding its place and finding its balance you call it, okay, paraphrase, I'll try to find it, but I don't think I'll find it. But when you come in, you open the book, first chapter, maybe, maybe introduction, you say, welcome inside mm -hmm. the great weave. Yes. Okay. We have to talk about that because I want to talk to you about it because the great weave and spirit keeper, mm -hmm. right? When you look at them like this, they're they're like this. But yeah. when you look at them like this, they're like this, right? Yeah. People yeah. can't see me. Okay, so I, I, I see you on video, so they don't know what I'm talking about. Okay. What I'm saying is I want people to know the depth and the breadth of the energy of looking at the weaver yeah. and, and looking at the spiritual path yeah. and really looking at this idea of spirit keeper 
because it's almost like this beautiful, perfect storm of consciousness and abundance. Yes, yes. Yes, and you know, one of the things that I feel is like the, the beauty of the weaving, let's say, is we're not actually in control of it or directing it. And, you know, as humans, <laughs> we're never very comfortable when we can't control and direct things. But the, the weaving is this great magical um, dimension that we live in and is creating magical possibility for us. And then when we're a spirit keeper of that weaving, what we're committing to is that we are going to, I always say we hold our thread, right? It's not our job to do the whole weaving, you know, that is the weaver's job. But our job is to know what our thread, our pieces in the weaving and to hold and keep that. And for me, that's really important because we live in a world now of overwhelm, you know, as, and everyone's like in, in other people's threads in essence. And I think, again, that's a, a really important thing of discernment. And, you know, and so for everyone listening right now, it's just to think and, you know, it'll come in a click. What's your thread in this weave? And it's, it's usually what brings you joy what you love doing, what um, synchronicity happens around it, and that in your life, no matter where you go, what you do, this thing always pops up. It's, it's like, I always say it's calling to you. It won't let you off the hook, and that's your thread. That's the magic that you're here to keep in the world. And you don't have to worry about everyone else's magic. I love this. You know what, because... What you just described and what you created and what we're calling a book, this mm. is so much more than a book. I almost mm. feel a little bit embarrassed to refer to this as a book. Mm. And of course, your publisher will probably send me a letter, but it is a book, but it's so much more than that. Robust <laughs> is an understatement, but I love what you've done because you're giving us a situation you're giving us information. You're giving us, this is the myth around it. You're giving us solutions. You're giving us rituals. I dare to say that you probably think you've left something out. That's probably going to be your next body of work. Absolutely. <laughs> this had to be downloaded to you. Yes. Was it? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I feel so I'm I'm a professional writer as well. I've been writing for two decades now. Wow. And I was a trained journalist before that and I was a reporter on human rights. So I often feel like these ideas uh, choose people who are trained writers because you know that's our craft. And and what I've known about books or ideas is it's like they're like babies they have a soul and they choose their mother and then they download into the mother and then you grow and gestate them and nourish them and then birth them out into the world and you know and it's funny that you say this about the book because when I create a book I never ever hold a vision of the book as like kind of bits of paper with words on I always see it as a, a, a home or a chamber or a mansion. And, and that when people open the first page, it's like they've opened a door. Yeah. yeah. And they've gone into a world, into a dimension. And, you know, the first few chapters are when someone greets you and makes you a cup of tea and then ushers you to different rooms where you can have different experiences. And, for me, that's how I see books. And I, I feel that's a medicine book rather than an entertainment book. It is no question about it. Because, you know, when I took a look at this, and I told you this, I took a look at it, um, I don't know if it was last night, whatever whatever time it was, it was before this morning. Mm -hmm. And I woke up at three o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. And I was in this place that you just described, which I couldn't redo it, but it was almost like a place of knowing, of knowing exactly what I needed to get up and do, mm -hmm. what I was going to look at, right? What my next step is, 
and without making an announcement yeah. Of, yeah. of things, just doing it. But I love this. There are so many things for the feminine magic and the feminine energy and the feminine spiritual path, whatever we want to call it. Mm-hmm. And I tell people, look, pick your own name for whatever it is you're on. Yeah. We're just putting yeah. some ideas out there. Yeah. But you nailed something in the chapter on, let me just pull it up, in the chapter on rooted power. And I've got to talk to you about this because if we as feminine entities don't get these these three myths right, we are doomed. And I need to just talk to you about them and then we'll talk about the rest of the book. Okay. Myth number one. This is so paradoxical for us. Mm. OMG, if I didn't have a dose of this this morning, needs are wrong, lower, unspiritual. Now, that's a myth. So that that's means that that is not a truth. No, it's not true. It's not true. It is our Achilles heel, I think, in so many ways. You know, I think for a really practical kind of experiment for people listening, Take a plant, you know, and don't don't water it. Every time you walk past it and you see it wilting, say, no, 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 you don't need water. You have no need, your spiritual plant. And watch it wilt and, <laughs> and, and, and die, you know, or, or, or then give it the water that it needs and watch it come to life and bloom and fulfill its potential. And, you know, women were in this, you know, place where we've been trained to fill everyone else's needs whilst in a dimension that we shouldn't have any needs. And that's unsustainable. And I almost think that's kind of metaphorical for Mother Earth. Like she has needs too. She's not just this infinite resource that we can take from. Uh, Mother Earth herself, like us, has needs. We need to know about our needs and we need to know about our planet's needs. This is crucial in these times. You know, and the reason I bring this up, I was talking with somebody the other day who commented on what we called the new thought movement. I, I, I never called it that. You know, because I never understood what that meant. But this thing number two here, this was so big, so big in it. And it caused a lot of people a lot of pain. And it's a second myth here in this one chapter. We should always be unconditionally loving. Yeah. That right there has caused more women to put themselves in physical harm, Mm -hmm. mental harm, spiritual harm. You, You get what I'm saying right here with this one? Absolutely. And again, we just look to nature. So a big part of feminine magic is we have a great teacher, right? You know, here, nature. So if you think that, you know, there's, you know, this unconditional love, try and take a bear cub from its mama bear in the wild. And you'll soon see how unconditionally loving that mother is to you. You know, that bear mama will go hard to put a limit and a condition that you do not go near her her bear cub, you know? So again, a really big part of, of feminine magic. And again, this is where we've been missing this balance it's not to say there is not a place for the idea of a really beautiful infinite love and a a god or a source that's full of unconditional love the issue comes when there's not this balance of feminine wisdom that says but you in this finite human body right you have to have conditions and boundaries you can't be just um this unconditional font of acceptance for every kind of behavior this is not the way of wisdom or magic i'm going to read this for everybody that's scratching their heads right now because this this one sentence right here in this this part of the book, it I I don't think I've ever heard anybody say this. I'm gonna say it, and it's okay. under the, the it's under the common sense. Part. Okay. It says it is true that there is a universal love that permeates all of creation. Yet in the embodied manifestation of life on Earth, conditions are actually included within its love. Yeah. I hand wrote that out on a piece of paper. Yeah. 
Exactly. It's like love. I will say power is the structure of love. And part of being in your power is, is having access to these qualities like discernment, boundaries. And that's part of love. That's part of a loving creator who wouldn't create a world where you didn't have the energy reserves to just infinitely meet needs of other people you know so yeah exactly and you know and in the Egyptian tradition that was Ma'at she held the sacred right. balance so we can see this in the old traditions this is not just like a new new idea all the old traditions in the Celtic tradition it was sovereignty the land goddess who chose the king based on his wisdom to keep things in balance and to to make the law to make the rules that that kept everything in in balance and i'm just going to mention the, the last one and then we're and then i want to spend the next time of having you share the insight and wisdom of the book because i think these three are important this is another one i i call these potholes i know i've stepped in them maybe i'm not <laughs> the only one on the planet but no i think you may have too and it's this other one that we went through that really i think this is the one that if we were to follow this myth, we would learn nothing from our failures or mistakes, whatever you all want to call it. There is nothing broken. Everything is perfect. I tried that. Yeah. Yeah. And then I got a disease in 2004 overnight. Mm. And I tried the, this is all good. Now, what I've learned from it, though, is how to take what was going on and mm. look at my vibrational energy and use discernment but this thing everything is perfect mm -hmm. man try to say that to a woman's been raped yeah exactly and again it's this it's this paradox there's this real paradoxical energy in the feminine mysteries on a really vast cosmic scale there is a sense of that there is a greater energy holding even even our deepest struggles and, 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 and wounds. But on a very practical level and, and feminine magic is all about embodiment is you can break things. <laughs> and sometimes they can be fixed and you know, sometimes they can't. Yeah. And so this is what we're really, we have to get this as a matter of an emergency for ourselves and the planet is that, you know, we can't be like, teenagers rampaging around <laughs> you know breaking things because it's all perfect and it doesn't matter anyway and there's it's all in a divine plan it's like no all the old traditions have said that we are guardians and custodians uh we we preserve things we 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 um we create the conditions for things to thrive and when when something gets broken we we accept that that was that was a breakage and, and that's where grief comes in you know yeah. honoring and lamenting and mourning and grieving not to get stuck in that place but just to as a, a stage or a cycle we move through until we we go into a rebirth cycle i want to thank you for and uh, your 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 publisher for allowing the inclusion of imagery Mm -hmm. of doing images yeah. of doing almost magic card like right yeah Beautiful. yeah i'm all over that um because as i moved on to the rest of the book what i realized is those three myths opened up the door for every little bit of healing that you then mm -hmm. offer throughout the book yeah right because yeah. the book really is in my opinion it is the place you go, whether you go to this page or you go to this page or you're drawn to this page or that page, yeah. you're going to heal something, aren't you? Yeah. Are and, we? You, and, and you know what? The R also serves a magical feminine purpose because often mm. we read something and, you know, we have to sit with it. We can't just rush on to the next page and the next idea. Again, it's the sense of, like, not taking too much on, but allowing time 
to for things to digest and land and so one of the purpose of the artwork is that you can be Beautiful. reading things and having energy in the the book that's really like stirring it and then you come to a, an image and for a moment you can rest in that more feminine magical consciousness because as you're looking at the image which is by a really wonderful artist in in the northeast coast of england and your brain kind of relaxes a bit that thinking mind just rests into the art and you get information from the art on this intuitive level and then you can go back into the words and the ideas yeah i got fixated on an image that came in the chapter uh, uh chapter 29 healing sacred feminine rituals yoni temple yeah. and uh at the end of that like if you go through i i just could not take my eyes off the image yeah you know and it was beautiful beautiful image so much detail so much symbolism you know bringing the animal natures tree of life you know yeah. bringing the divine spiritual mind in the flow of the i mean this one image <laughs> i stayed with this last night i think for an hour yeah it's you beautiful. know i i looked at it i had to to make it larger and i thought wow so powerful because isn't imagery as well healing exactly and you know what i'll just weave in a little bit of uh, brain science here for us so what i you know I, I touch upon in this book but in in other writings i've done i touch upon cerebellar consciousness and the cerebellum is it's kind of demoted as the primal or primitive part of our brain it's in it's in the back of our head and but what science is now discovering is that this is the part of our brain that is responsible for art, music, movement, um, feelings, relationship. And, and, and a way to think about the cerebellum is that if you've ever driven across town and you get somewhere and you can't remember driving, Right. So who was driving? Who was driving you when you were like in your imagination, daydreaming, thinking about something? Your actual cerebellum is your mother mind. This mother mind processes like millions, millions more information in a, every second than the thinking mind. It's, it's like the mother of us in the same way that if you were to have a crisis that, you know, that you, you know, your life Life was under threat what happens is that mother mind that cerebellum shuts down your thinking mind to take over to save you and and that is also where we can access magical powers so and and so looking at art listening to music meditating all these um all these modalities or magical things where, you know, it's almost like our brain softens and relaxes yeah. and we shift from this very focused way of being into this back brain magical. You know, this is when we can really absorb a lot of information and insight. And even if we were not aware of it in the moment, it's, it's kind of downloaded in us and it's become a spiritual guide to us. And it's, mm. it's like evolving us and it will kind of come into our life and let us know the direction to take i love that i mean for those of you all that are just tuning in um i just want to make sure you all know because we've just been going having a great conversation with sarah in here um sarah i want to make sure people know how to get a copy of the book can you tell folks the best way to do that so you can get the book at innertraditions.com and they actually mail all across the world. So that's probably the best option. Of course, it's on all the Amazons as well. And it's also at Barnes and Noble on their website as well. So there's, there's plenty of ways to get hold of it. I want to invite you back. Um, and I'll, Linda will make sure that happens okay. because this is part one. It okay, is not great. possible. I mean, people can go to your podcast. They can hear more about this. But there's so much in here. Everything mm -hmm. from the fact that you really explained 2020 to me when yeah. you got to the part about Lady Saturn, because <laughs> I have my son and 
three planets in Sagittarius and I have my moon and three planets in Capricorn. Okay. And so I didn't put this together, yeah. this Jupiter Saturn thing, mm. but the way you put it together went beyond the astrological yeah. version of it. Um, I know we've got two minutes left. Okay. I can't thank you enough for joining me here today. I made my promise and we did not take breaks, everybody. What would well, you love to say to us? And please, I hope you'll come back. Thank you so much for this beautiful weaving that we're calling a book. Well, thank like you. It's been my pleasure to be here and chatting with you. And yeah, and and to feel, you know, how you've interpreted the magic in the book is, and that's part of it. You've kind of put your own threads in it and created, you know, your own magic with it. And 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 so it's I always think it they're like um books are like collaborations. They are. And what I come away with with this is. This is for me a web that includes the invisibility of consciousness, mm -hmm. the invisibility of what you can and cannot see in magic. Mm -hmm. It combines it with our capacity, which is infinite, yeah. to yeah. do anything we yeah. can consciously come to. And then the third thing is how it moves you into action without you even knowing. But isn't that magic? Of course. And, and you know, the, 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 the magic of the weave is that even us being here today and everyone listening, that's part of the weave. That's no coincidence. Yeah. Um, we will have you back because I do want to get to a part two. And the part two that I would like to invite you back is to talk about when we look at all this together and we look at where we are in the world today, how it provides this beautiful collage for people to be able to shift, change, rise above, move yeah. ahead, and don't give up on your dreams. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for that reminder. <laughs> Thank you. Um, what a very special body of work. It is a book. Please, you can get it on Amazon. You can get the Kindle version. I think there's actually an audio, audio, audio version. So yeah. everything is here. But most importantly, when you get your hands on it, everybody, you can open it up. You'll see a page. You'll see a poem. You'll see a quote. You'll see a message. Don't be afraid to take it in because the weaver and the web are one, aren't they? <laughs> Absolutely. All right, everybody, we're going to take a short break. I want to thank all of our friends at Inner Traditions. I want to thank Siren for coming on today. I want to thank her for not being afraid to take a very powerful message that out that we need in the world today. And I want to thank all of you for being the best audience on the planet. We're going to take a really short break. We'll be right back.